She wants to fold them. I want to tear them up. I thought about mixing them together. centrally located in the region and I've got quite a few things around uh, around us that are actually uh, very close to be able to utilize things to the outdoor recreation market and the uh, actually are we've got a large pretty large uh, market for that and in Wise County as well as some different uh, some different participation uh, ages as far as uh, Incomes and, and a different thing, but all this stuff. Let that scroll. This is going a lot faster than I was going to talk. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, my, my big thing is going to be the equestrian market and just offer the biking and hiking uh, and horseback riding throughout the, the area to be able to actually uh, go out from a home base with different lodges uh, for horse camping. You can't horse camp pretty much anywhere uh, out there in Wise County. Uh, so we're going to try to provide that. And uh, I've got quite a few different things to, uh, to, to advertise with. But I've, I've done several things with uh, National Trails Day, working on a new website with Wix, and uh, 
have had several weekend events already uh, to actually have uh, 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 people come with their horses. And if you want to bring your own horse, that's the, where we're going to start and we'll eventually work into rental horses. Um, one of the big things I want to undergird everything with is Cowboy Church uh, and some Wilderness Outdoor Ministries with uh, some, uh, also some wild art stuff that uh, is a well-known author for um, the other thing. That's some of my, prop, uh, some of my progress I've made since, since I got the uh, grant in the spring working on some new roads and some of my expansion plans right there uh, just shows you a few things that I'm going to be putting in the property is about 93 acres across from the National Forest, so there's lots of stuff. Uh, these are my uh, staffing projections I have right now for the future, uh, short term and long term, as far as being able to have different facilities and things I do, and plus the use of my uh, uh, different grant money where I can win uh, for different things we got to get started with. So that's uh, pretty much it. Like I said, I that around a little bit. So a little slide for me. Do you have any questions for Nathan? Your visuals are excellent. <coughs> That's great. Yeah. A little too fast. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, right on time. I said it up, I can't talk that fast. What are you currently offering? Well, currently, I am, uh, I've been trying to do a little bit of guiding. Uh, when I've been here, but most of my stuff right now is going to be when I organize an event for a weekend because I, I don't live here still, and I've been coming back and forth. I drive six hours to class every week, and one way. So I'm trying to uh, actually develop everything into a more of a full-time business. So right now, you know, if I can get people to do certain things, I would schedule more things, you know, throughout the week or, or different times of the year or whatever it would be. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm battling right now, is just being able to, to be here full time. So. I would say good evening, but hey, it's evening. Hi. With all the activities that we have here that we've listened to over the last period of weeks we've been together, everybody we try and get here to Southwest Virginia needs a place to stay. And what better place than the Collins House Inn? This is a representative of our logo. This is our byline that we use. All the members, yes, leave as friends. We try real hard to make that happen. Now back in the early days, this is what a bed and breakfast typically looked like. That could be your bed. That could be your breakfast place. Now come to the Collins house. That's what it looks like after it had been remodeled when the car ran into it several years ago from the front door and shut us down. This is what you come to today. This is your bed and breakfast. Now, as we got going in the business, we took the business on when it was a 2% occupancy. I should say a 0.2% occupancy. Take that times 150 room days per month, and you know what we took over. Now we're at 27% two and a half years later. However, as you can see, the increase continues upward, but we've reached a bubble. How do we take that bubble and move forward from there? And what we do is we take a look at the networking capabilities, first of all, try to do it on the cheap if you can do it. Every one of you has a network. Every one of you have people that can help us. And we have a network that can help you. So as we all join together, this is one great way to be able to leverage off of everybody in this class. We can do that for one. And then we can take a look at the three other venues that we've looked at. Small weddings. There's no place in Southwest Virginia that really has any small wedding venue. You either get trapped into going to a big, uh, like to 
Hungry Mother State Park, which is nothing wrong with it, but you could charge for something bigger than you want. If you want elegance, you want to come to a bed and breakfast that's number one in Virginia and rated 5.0 out of 5.0 on TripAdvisor, you come to us. Now, when you come to the bed and breakfast, we can have themed weddings there. We can have a shotgun wedding. We have an efficient who is our chief of police. We can do items like that. We move on from there. We've investigated the area of the Appalachian Trail Outfitters where we work together with Mike at the uh, Cohe Cafe for the Appalachian people to come in and move forward back and forth between us and with them. We also look at uh, fishing in Southwest Virginia. Great fishing, and we've got a lot of trail guides here that can work with us there as well. We look at Back of the Dragon, six of the best touring facility trails down here in Southwest Virginia. We got over 250,000 bikers that work their way through this part of the country. Why not get a piece of the action here? Taking all of that together, though, we need help. We need help and personnel, either setting it up on an internship program, as you read on the slide, or getting managers to help in the various areas to help build those specific areas to increase our tourism capability in the non-room revenue. As we break that bubble in non-room revenue, we make money. question and the first question is if you want to have luxury accommodations our rates will run anywhere from 130 to 155 a night that is for either queen suite or for a king suite everything is self-contained and I invite every one of you when you're coming through Marion stop at our front door push the doorbell come on in but please stop at the curb don't run into the front end of the <laughs> I loved your pictures of that, yeah. of that not the before mm -hmm. <laughs> the actors. It, was, it was lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I want to come stay. Come stay. I want to have a shotgun wedding there, but I'm married. <laughs> well, we have Bowery <laughs> Newells. Oh, right. so, so we can have, we can have the same location oh, well, for the Bowery Newells. That's Newell. right. Tell everybody I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> As Paula Harvey would say, wait for the rest of the story when we have finished night. It's different for every, every single person in here. So what I want to tell you tonight is why that I feel like my business, Clinch of Adventures, has been a success. Now, there's numerous reasons that it's been successful, but there's three really main reasons that I feel like that we have been successful. First off, uh, we put God first in everything that we do. And so I know that if we put God first, that we're going to be successful. And it might not be on the numbers, but I'm 100% sure that if we put him first, everything's going to take care of itself. And that has proven to be the fact throughout the first day that we opened in July. The second reason is, is because that we've networked with people just like you all. And we are not, uh, I was just telling Sandy a minute ago, we have, we, my mindset has changed about this. It used to be about Clinch River Adventures. It's not about Clinch River Adventures. It's about every single one of us coming together. So, on that note, we want to take Clinch River Adventures, and our expansion plan is to, first off, we want to hit the fishing market. And I say that because we have a mentor on the New River, and he, um, it's 10% of his volume, but it's 60% of his profit. So that is really where that the money is, is in fishing trips and guided fishing trips. 
Um, but the next thing that we want to do, we want to expand and actually do. Come on. <laughs> we want to expand and do an RV park, um, incorporating campsites, as well as we eventually want to get down the line. Our five-year plan, our, actually our three-year plan, is to have glamping, and then of course some cabins, and then our five-year plan is to get into the winter activities and have a tubing resort. So, uh, you know, we're looking long-term with this, but we're looking at it as a destination. We want everybody to come together, and we want everybody to be prosperous. I can assure you this, that if we can all come together, that we will be ten times more prosperous if we were by ourselves. So, on that note, I'll tell you a little bit about, for ten seconds, I guess. <laughs> First year, we sent 723 people down the river, and we showed a profit of $327. Woo! -hoo! <laughs> Paying all the equipment. That's good stuff. Second year, uh, we got the grant from uh, Entrepreneur Challenge, $5,000. We pushed that into our canoes and kayaks, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Anybody? Do you feel you, you, I mean, with your expansion into RV and the other, the fishing and other things, do you feel, feel you hit your limit from what you have to offer today? No, we have not. And I know that because uh, we hit some very unseen circumstances at the beginning of the year, and we had a marketing plan that was going to push paddle boards and actually four fish and kayaks out just to kind of do a soft opening this year of the fishing side, um, and we were unable to do that, and we, were, we still actually grew by 500 reservations this year. So, um, so no, we have not reached the cap on that. But I remember whenever, and not to go on about this, but I remember whenever that they were doing the award ceremony, the guy from Pals came, and he said, we're not like McDonald's. We don't have a lot of items uh, that are okay. He said, we take a few items and we make them great. And that's the way that I feel like that I want our business to be, is I want every single aspect, whether it's tubing, kayaking, or canoeing, I want it to be great. And so uh, it was the Lord's will for us not to do paddleboarding and fishing kayaks this year, so we're going to get it. video playing the background of what uh, we do up at uh, North 40. Yeah. 
shot him in the back. Okay. Uh, I'm Jack from North 40 Aerosol. Uh, first off, I want to tell you a bit what Aerosol is. Uh, it's a team-based action pursuit game where you use real-looking weapons to shoot the little plastic BBs that's coming around uh, at each other. Uh, it is a lot of great fun. Uh, Aerosol does encourage uh, team building and self-confidence along with being, uh, constructing both physical and mental exercise. Right now we have a major <coughs> field located in North Virginia. Uh, it's where you have our weekly games where you introduce players to do through uh, airsoft and do all the different aspects and scenarios that you play. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, on the field we just constructed uh, a few months ago as a pro shop. So I get to display all my wares, so I have everything that the Airsoft player needs, from BBs to guns to nice tactical gear, uh, so they can look all tactical cool. Uh, we also host uh, remote events. Last year I had two. I had one at the Tasman County Fairground. It was Operation Battle of the Clinch 1. Uh, we're having Battle of the Clinch 2 this weekend, actually. Uh, also went to Appalachia High School for Operation Crimson Star. We had 100 players show up at West Virginia the weekend after Christmas. It was cold. We had 100 people show up. I'm not sure of any other activity in Appalachia that has 100 people show up, most of them out of state. Uh, as far as expansion goes, we're doing two things. Uh, we're going to use the same field you see here, but include Nerf guns. We're going to open it up to a younger crowd from 7 to 11 to come in and experience what we do with Airsoft with Nerf guns, which is a lot safer than what we do here. On the time safety gear, they got to have a pair of glasses. Um, also, we are looking into getting a indoor facility um, somewhere in the region. We can host indoor games, so if it is snowing, raining, nasty outside, we're not limited. We can just go inside for an all-day game and not worry about the weather. We are looking to put on two part-time employees. Uh, one is going to be a uh, gun technician will be there to do repairs and upgrades on the guns. Uh, and also a field helper who helps me referee and also helps out in the pro shop uh, selling what we have to offer. That's what's going on in North Korea. So, so how do you know you've been hit? I mean, okay. <laughs> if, if, if you had a boyfriend or something in middle school that went up playing and flicked you on the neck, uh -huh. that's not what it feels. Okay. So, so you, you feel it, if you get, get here on ear, you feel a little vibration. Um, when you start out with, you don't feel that. You've got to learn your mind and your body to feel that. When you pull your dead rag, say, I'm hit, I'm okay. hit. And you walk back to respawn and go on from there. So what are the dangers? Because you talked about children being, you know, you had... Well, these are these are going from 400 to 500 feet per second, depending on what gun you're, you're playing with. Um, if you do not... Um, here. Um, if you're not have your safety gear on, your face guard, your eye protection, um, which this is inside the safety area, that's not me. It's going on somebody else. Sorry. <laughs> All right. If you don't have your safety gear on, then it's dangerous. Um, younger kids, I don't trust them not to keep their safety goggles on on the field, so they don't come in without a parent or guardian. Set aside them 100% of the time. Questions and comments. Um, these are gas driven? Um, they have two, they have three kinds high pressure air, CO2, and this is actually electric. It uses a pull back the plunger, presses air, pops the BB up the front. Which one do you utilize most? Uh, electric guns. <coughs> uh, they're cheaper now, than the The only way you know how to um, tell your head is if tune your, your shop to your awareness. I was doing this in Korea in 2005. Okay, they had the, the air, okay, and the way their business model was set up, you go in, they have a tank, okay, and you, you carry it along with the weapon, and they charge you so much to fill the tank. So you only had a little bit, and they give you usually enough rounds to last for that tank. But they also had sensor vests, and one on the helmet, and one, one that was a vest, front and back. Mm -hmm. So if you got hit, 
It would light up inside visually. You see red lights okay. inside your visor. So I was wondering if you did, you know, research any of that kind of stuff to make it a little bit different. Uh, so maybe I've never heard of that before. Do you remember the name of the equipment? I don't remember the name of the equipment. And basically, it was in the middle of the of the downtown. Okay. In the town called Chihei. Basically, it was all set up in conference boxes. Is yeah. Basically, what it was it was all tactile type thing. But they had kids coming in from school. And what it is is, no matter what you showed up in, because they, they wear school uniforms. Okay, like some of the Catholic school girls always wear dresses. You'd show up and they'd take you into like a Kinex box with all their gear and stuff, and they'd have used be used. You find a set, put them on, and then and they'd put the vest on, your helmet, and visor, and you go out and have fun. It's kind of what they did for the boost of fun. Like all the women. We've had, we've had a good girl here over here, so I'm hoping it continues on. And what I've seen so far is we're, we're doing good. Yeah, I mean, I had a blast when I did it, so I know it's really, really cool. Uh, also, tactical training. We thought about bringing Branson up and make some like, like <coughs> zombie populist tactical training. You know, we fun do. stuff like that. I've got a uh, team member in Tactical um, Training. We're going to be logging the stuff up there. Uh, he is trained with a Marine Wheel Sergeant. I'll say that. Uh, and he comes and brings a lot of that to the players. About once a year, I'll have a training session where we come in and learn a little bit more uh, about how to move, how to come online. Because right now, they'll come online and they're in a line all the way down the trail. And it doesn't work out the what about but, sim rounds? Um, my insurance won't even touch that. So that that's a we that in, in, in need when I do a tactical trim. You sim rounds. Those are the best oil dye. dye yeah. yeah, those will leave a, a well. But oh, yeah. We also did our training in Connex boxes. We called chicken boxes. Boxes stacked them differently, cut them up, put ladder walls in them, and then, and then have different rooms put into them and stuff. And that's a very small footprint. Oh, yeah. And you can make some money that way, too. That's pretty cool. Did you ever go to Mocha no. up in Indiana? Just go back from there. They had a tower, a six story tower made out of comics. Well, you guys definitely need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. My name is Jennifer Bailey, and my husband and I live in St. Paul, Virginia. We currently own uh, and, and operate St. Paul Suites and Cottages, and we are expanding to Sugar Hill Brewing Company. But since I'm the last person who's doing the presentation, I'm going to break all the rules tonight. And I'm not going to tell you all the details. Even though it's so exciting about our new business, I am, though, going to talk about this group. This group and all the groups that we came out of, think about what this means for this region. This is a great thing for this region, to have people who are envisioning a different future than what we've had in the past. We are working hard at all these new businesses. This is very exciting and encouraging for all. All of you have stood up here and put your pitches out there, and you've done a great job, and you're going to do a great job next week. But the fact remains, there will be 14 of us who go home without anything. But that is not a predictor of failure for any of us. We're still going to be able to do what we see that we need to do. We can still do that. There's going to be three who go home with some money, but you're also going to have responsibilities too. It's going to be tough using that money and creating the jobs, but we will do it. I know since all of you already own businesses, you know a little something about discouragement. Well, we've been discouraged in starting our business 
we've been told we're going to hell because we're going to start a brewery. <laughs> we've been told that multiple times, and people are serious when they say that to us. Well, I've read the book that they claim that that comes from. I've read the Bible for 20 years. I read it through once every year, and that's not in there. So that's not the criteria. So I won't be discouraged. In that little 212 degree book, it said if you will devote an hour a day to one topic, you'll be an expert. That's what I've done with the Bible. And I feel like that has given me the ammunition I need in life to do what I need to do. So I just want to say to everybody here, I'm so proud of you. Keep going. Keep going. No matter who knocks you down, no matter what they say, you just keep going. And together, we're changing the perception in the country of this region. When I was a kid, 40 years ago, people thought we were a bunch of dumb hicks. And now they love this area. So let's keep going.
probably will. Um, I'm on the I'll say that. Can we do it differently? Green. Green. So. Not dour or sour. Uh-huh. Everything. Yes! Every hour or more sour. Uh, our pickles make nipples. Pickles make nipples. <laughs>
uh, something along the, the order of 80% of all restaurateurs end up going bust within three to five years, something like that. Um, it's, it's a pretty tough business. Bob Farrell did very well in it, and he has always attributed um, his customer service uh, philosophy of giving that little something extra, and he refers to it as giving the customer the pickle. So for those of you who have not seen the first one, there's your kind of a quick and dirty on it. So we're going to look at, you have a packet. Oh, and here's the thing I have to tell you all about the thing we're going to do tonight. Normally, Andrea and I go places and we do this training in three and a half to four hours. Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> so we have created a mini condensed, condensed version. Yeah. Um, so if I, if I look lost, it's because I'm trying to catch breath. Um, because I'm determined for you all to get the good out of it. And so we cut away as much as we can of the fluff. Um, so in your packet, you have several things. One of the things you have uh, is a leadership proficiency page. Um, then you also have a page about, are you a micromanager? Do micromanagers know who you are? <laughs> the third thing back, um, Leadership tickles. What do you know? What do you, what do you know, know about, about leadership? leadership? And that's where you're going to take some notes in the first activity. Right behind that, though, is a pretest. No one but you is ever going to see this. So go ahead in about <laughs> two and a half minutes. Look over these questions. They are strictly uh, multiple choice. Jot down an answer. Remember, no one but you is going to see this. You can go back and change them later. No, no, no. The other stuff's just for you to take home or to look at it as we go. But right now we're doing the pretense. It's about the fourth thing back. I was just describing things as we went. What do you know about the uh, The one behind it. I got them in the wrong order. So I'm going to go ahead while you do that, I'm going to tell you about the rest of what's in this packet. The front two sheets, the one about leadership proficiency and micromanagement, those are for you to take home. Um, learn from if there's something there for you. Whatever. Uh, the third page is an activity that we're going to all do together. The fourth page is the... Um, they're in the box. <laughs> Uh, the fourth page is the pretest you're doing. The fifth page, which goes over onto the sixth page, those are just notes. Those are summaries of this whole thing because we are going to be blowing through it pretty quickly tonight. And I want you to be able to have notes to take home with you in case you miss something as you're, you know, doing it yourself. Then there are two colored sheets on the back, a light green one and a dark green one. One of them is for you to do tonight. It says, it's like green, it says a self-assessment and development plan. This is where you make your plan to be a better leader, to improve your leadership. All of you have marvelous leadership skills. I've seen them in action um, in almost every case. Um, in the rest of your cases, I don't doubt that you hang out with this many leaders, you have some skills. Um, so this is something that you're gonna work on to become a better leader. The last page, the dark green one, is so that you can go back in three months or six months, whenever, and you can check up on yourself. Because one of the things that leaders do is they're accountable to themselves. So that's what's in your packet. So what page should we start on? Four. Pretest. Start with the pretest. Thank you. is just for you to gauge where you are now as we go in case there's something that maybe you missed. You'll know that you want to <clears throat> tune in a little harder, maybe make yourself a note.
The pretest is just this one page. Yeah, it's right? just that one page. It's two questions. And I apologize for getting the uh, leadership page in front of it. Um, Problem not. We're trying to take some of the excess bulk out of the packet so that you all didn't have quite so much to take home unexplained. Just we're showing the shortness. Do what? Just show enthusiasm. Just show enthusiasm, that's right. always super enthusiastic. The more Mountain Dew and coffee I have, the more enthusiastic I become. <laughs> Alright. So, if you're not finished, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Like I said, this is just a pretest. This is sort of to help you gauge where you are now. Um, are you ready? Let's go to page, the page in front of that. It's uh, it's the third page in your pack, and I think it's labeled page six at the bottom. Yep. Which is not confusing or anything. Those pages have nothing to do with anything that or it is in that packet. So, um, it's the page that says, "What do you know about leadership?" So, let's talk about this. When you think of a great leader, what comes to mind? Write your answer down. When you get an answer written down, throw your hand up in the air. And if somebody else has your answer, great. If somebody else has an answer you hadn't thought of that you think is particularly valuable, go ahead and share it. Yes, ma'am? Approachable. Approachable. Awesome. I think that is a really important quality of leadership. Uh, lead by example. Lead by example. Yes. Who wants to follow somebody who doesn't seem to be able to walk the walk? <clears throat> We're always taught that to be an effective leader, you have to be an effective follower as well. That's right. You've got to know the rules and be able to follow the rules before you can make the rules, right? Inspiring. Yes, inspiring. Um, it's not, not, not good to feel lukewarm about the person you're, you're following, is it? A good listener. A good listener, yeah, that's really important. You have to know what people need before you can attempt to give it to them. Confident. Confident, exactly. Because no matter whether you know what's going on or not, that's right. If all else fails, act like you know what you're doing. You must have a good plan. You must have a good plan. And if you don't have one, there's one out there for you. You just have to own it. Yeah, I think it's important that a leader have a plan. You're right. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, clear communication. Clear communication. People must know what you're asking of them before they can give it to you. Willingness to share success and take ownership. Yes, very important, very important. One more, I saw one more hand, yes. Integrity. Integrity. Integrity is massively important. So we have, circle that one. Circle that one. Go. I know what Marla said. Did, I, I can't hear anything. Was it you that said enthusiasm? That's what I said first. Okay. I knew somebody said it. Serve that one. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so these are all super important qualities of leadership. These are all qualities of leadership that um, we would all do well to grow. These three. Confidence, integrity, and enthusiasm are the things that are going, we're going to be talking about tonight. They're the things that are going to be um, your leadership pickles. So, let's go on and see what our video says about that. And I'll work on our video here, I think. We may have to turn the uh, lights down just a little while we're watching the video. I'm not sure. I may have to beg it, please, with the video. Oh, here, I'll send it. <laughs>
could not yeah. see it either. <laughs> Forest stuff, trees, yeah. etc. There was so much green. <laughs> of giving customers pickles. The idea is to find out what your customers really want and then to make sure they get it every time. That's the pickle. The same is true with the people you lead. They need their pickles too. They want and need certain things from you as their leader. If they get those things, they'll follow you and succeed. If they don't get their leadership pickles, their belief and respect for you as a leader will begin to slip just a little. But we need to start with the biggest challenge that most of you face. The fact is that, like it or not, most of you have to be both manager and leader. Your day and your energy can easily be consumed with anything and everything that comes flying through your door as a manager. Leadership can be put on hold. Unless you do something to get control of your day, your day will always control you. Leadership takes a separate commitment of your time and energy, and I'm here to tell you you can do both. The secret lies in knowing the difference between the two. Warren Bennis has the best quote on this subject. He says, managers are people who do things right, while leaders are people who do the right things. I'll be honest, it's not easy. If you think doing things right is hard, doing the right thing every day will take all you have because leadership is about consistently being the best person you can possibly be, period. Each of you knows exactly who that person is. It's you when you're enthusiastic and passionate about what you're doing. It's you when you're courageous and confident where you're heading. It's you when you're serving and encouraging those you lead. Leadership is about making a conscious choice to be your best. Once you make that commitment and practice it, you will be a leader, no matter what comes flying through your door as a manager. Let's talk about the leadership pickles your team needs from you. The first is the enthusiasm pickle. Enthusiasm is a combination of energy and excitement. As a leader, it is your job to spread enthusiasm throughout your team. One of the best young leaders I ever met started out with absolutely no experience. Helen talked her way into a job leading the housekeeping staff of a small town hospital. Helen, hi. Everyone, this is Helen Wheeler, your new supervisor. Helen, come on in. Have a seat. Join us. She'd never done anything like it before, and she had a work cut out for her. Okay. She had a lot of people convinced, and she couldn't do it with her expertise, because she had none. But what she lacked in experience, she made up for with enthusiasm and passion for learning. It's been great. Helen could be enthusiastic about a clean floor and passionate about a well-made bed. <laughs> they used to call her Helen Wheels because she never slowed down. She had an endless supply of energy and a sense of urgency about everything she did. Her motto was, do it right and do it right now. Everybody has a problem with procrastination. That's why it's so important for a leader 
with to bring that sense of urgency to every situation. Do it right, and do it right now. In the end, it was her enthusiasm for her job and her devotion to her staff that won over all her critics. When I opened my first restaurant, all I had was enthusiasm. We had no money. I didn't know a thing about ice cream. I met a guy that did. We went to a landlord. He put everything in, spent most of the money on the place. We got everybody excited. That's how we won. So that's all I had. Enthusiasm. Remember, enthusiasm is contagious. But so is the lack of it. I've had managers ask me, what if I'm not in the mood? Who said anything about a mood? I didn't say you had to feel enthusiastic. I said you have to be enthusiastic. Sometimes people need to feed off your energy because they run out of their own. You need to have enough to lend them some of yours. Before you walk through that door, you need to do what it takes to find and renew your enthusiasm. You need to take a deep breath, reach down inside. It's showtime, baby. The second leadership pickle your team needs is the confidence pickle. As a leader, it is your job to inspire confidence. My favorite quote on this topic comes from Joel Barker, a futurist. He says, a leader is a person you will choose to follow to a place you would not go by yourself. That's a terrific quote because it clearly defines who is a leader and who is not. Congratulations to you if you've been chosen to lead. Leadership is a courageous calling and most people simply do not have what it takes. They fear the unknown. They fear change. They fear the future. Giving your team the confidence pickle means taking the fear out of the future. Without the confidence pickle, employees worry about anything and everything. They worry about how they're doing. They worry about the economy. They worry about layoffs. They fear the unknown. And the less they know, the more they speculate. So keep them informed. Keep them in on things. Share everything you can share. Make them part of your strategic planning. Ask them what's working and what needs fixing. They may think they are the ones who are kept in the dark, but the fact is your employees always know more than you do. Repeat after me. My employees always know more than I do. I will seek their advice. Why? Because they are closer to your customers than you are and your customers will always determine your future. So when it comes to the future, share everything you can and gather all the advice you can. That's how you inspire confidence in you as a leader. The other side of the confidence pickle is about inspiring self-confidence in those you lead. I remember the first time I met Victor. He was a dishwasher in one of our restaurants. He had a great work ethic. He had a great attitude. Everybody loved him. But he did have one small problem. When Victor was eight years old, he lost an eye in a freak accident. He came from a humble background, so there was never any money for cosmetic surgery. I have to be honest with you. It was a little tough to look at, but so easy to look at. Well, every time we tried to promote Victor from the back kitchen out to the front in the restaurant, he turned us down. Nah, I don't think so. I like it back here. I miss the heat. Oh, come on. <laughs> we could use a guy like you out there. You've got fast hands and a great smart. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I just got a good thing going on back here right now. Okay. Well, think about it some more. Yeah, sure. I think it's we could guess why, but no one said anything. One day on his break, I caught him watching the fountain crew. In our restaurants, we always set up the ice cream fountain so that all the customers coming in walk past. And our fountain kids always try to put on a little show. As Victor watched this, I could see a big smile come across his face. So I went over and sat down. It's as fun as it looks, huh? I work in the fountain, it's as fun as it looks. Little kids smiling, making people happy. 
you know, work with two girls instead of dirty dishes. <laughs> well, that's fun to watch from the air, but, you know, I still work well under pressure. Pressure. I offered him a job working in the family. He thought for just a second, and he turned me down. This time I asked him why. He said, I don't belong out there. I can see it on people's faces when they look at me. I said, Victor, I'll make you a bet. You work the fountain for one week with that smile on your face, I'll bet you the only thing people will see is that smile of yours. I don't think so, Mr. Farrell. Give it a try. And if what I say isn't true, why well, you can keep the pay raise and go back to washing dishes. But I believe you can do this. Yeah? Absolutely. Hey, I know a good fountain kid when I see one. He looked back over the fountain for a minute. Then he turned. He said to me with a big smile. <laughs> well, I think so. I do, Victor. Yes, Victor, I really do. Do you know what? All of us have a little bit of Victor in us. There's something about ourselves we like to change. We all have walls we've made ourselves, and we can't seem to get over them. And most of them start right here. Henry Ford said, think you can or think you can't. Either way, you'll be right. What we tell ourselves about our future will usually come true. And we can be our own worst enemies. As a leader, you are in a position to change the direction of people's lives by inspiring confidence in themselves. Usually, it's as simple as presenting an opportunity and saying, I believe you can do this. That's all the nudge that most people need. Some people have never heard that their entire life. They need to know that you believe in them. Bring in the zoo. Victor turned out to be an amazing fountain kid. People only saw his smile. Then he became one of the most popular waiters. Over the next few years, he went from team leader to manager to regional manager, all because of a little self-confidence pickle. The third and final leadership pickle is integrity. As a leader, it is your job to demonstrate integrity. Integrity is defined in the dictionary by an old-fashioned phrase called uprightness of character. I like that. I get a picture of a leader walking upright through a tough situation. The temptation may be to duck and dodge the arrows that are coming at you. But you can't do that as a leader. Why? Because your team is always watching. They watch what you do when things get tough. They watch who you are as a person. They watch to see if you pick up litter in the parking lot on the way in. They want to see if what you say matches up with what you do. They don't miss much. And you can count on one thing. What they see is what you get. If they see that you have a passion for taking care of customers on good days as well as bad days, that's what you'll get. If they see you treating employees with fairness and respect, that's how they'll treat each other. What they see is what you'll get. One of the unforgivable sins of leadership is hypocrisy, especially if you're leading younger people. They don't particularly trust management or authority. But ask them to describe their favorite teacher or coach, and they will almost always describe people who were enthusiastic about what they taught. People who believed in them and gave them confidence. Or people who were willing to walk their talk with conviction and integrity. That is how you lead young people. That is how you lead anyone. Those are the leadership pickles. My wish for you is that you rekindle your enthusiasm for your work and for your team and always have enough to spread around. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. I hope you inspire confidence in those you lead by keeping them in the know. Ask for their advice and let them know that you believe in them. And remember, what they see is what you'll get. So demonstrate integrity at all times by doing the right thing, no matter what the cost. When all is said and done, it comes down to this. Leaders are those who serve the people who serve the customer. Employees are not here to do our bidding. We are here to serve them. 
Are you serving your employees? Are you taking care of their needs so they can take care of their customers? Are they getting the leadership pickles? You were not chosen to lead by mistake. Someone in the leadership saw something in you. Chances are they saw the best in you. They believed in you. Now it's your turn to believe and serve your team. Thanks for watching and good luck with your career as a leader. And remember, when in doubt, give them the leadership pickles.
I would be concerned that if the whole business relies on this money from the because they're going to do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's fair to them. Well, if I don't want to be on the right. Right. Oh, yeah. The plan is the plan. I mean, it should be there anyway. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, to from before, a brief four, remember before, date, D A T. Where did you go? You know what? It's so funny. I still use it in HR because sometimes I don't see people see what I'm writing. And I can know just enough to where I can fix it. And when I work with the Japanese, they love that because they think everything's a secret. And you know, in America, we're more, uh, North America, we're more open. But we would be in meetings and stuff. And I wouldn't be taking minutes, really. I'd just be taking my own notes. And they'd say, Eva Song, what did you say? What did you say? <laughs> I, took, I took it though. Uh, where did you go? Where did you go to school? Oh, um, I wish that college would come back. I hope something happens. Well, I wish something would happen now. VI. We know to be a VI graduate said something when I was in school. It was, I mean, it was meaningful. Mm -hmm. Well, well, what do you think will happen to the buildings then? There's a couple of other schools looking at it. Anybody you know? Nobody I know of. He did. He would have to. Yeah. I'd oh, I'd have to shoot you. No, there's a reason I moved here. <laughs> there you'd be out again. Yeah, that guy, Whitey Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Whitey. <laughs> that was my boss. <laughs> I told somebody that, and they were like, "Really? No." <laughs> It's such a beautiful building. Uh, if you read about these haunted buildings or buildings there, that are left behind. There's a haunted section in that. I've got a sister. Did you know that? There's a haunted section in that? I never lived on the Where is it? Where is it? 
Um, when you come up the driveway and go past the auditorium, there's two buildings. The building on the right, around the back side of it, up, up top. The door is shut and nobody goes in. But they told us that when we come in. I would love to go to well, the place to have a haunted house. I was just saying, maybe if we can't get coffee. My daughter graduated and she said the best president that was there just wasn't running things right. The last one that was there. Oh, yeah, let's see. And that was I don't know why that was crazy. Not best in the community. Yeah, thank you. There's a writing on the wall. Just read it. Project. <laughs> you can only bake this money so many times. Are you going to be at the new knowledge one? Yep. Kevin's been doing it. I listened to it on my way back. No, I need to get one again. Yeah, Kevin. I was at that one. I told him I was coming just to be a heck of a week. Do we have to do we have to do that? The guy that taught that class? Company that he works for. He's going to be designing the conference market website for us. We applied for a grant with the town with having a Main Street when we got it. It's a pretty cool website. One of the last things we talked about before the video started was qualities of leadership. So we watched the video, we're all back now. How many of you believe that how you treat people who work for you is how they're going to treat their customers. Show hands. Pretty safe to assume, isn't it? Who believes that it's up to leaders to be an example of what they expect for those who follow them? Yeah, me too. Me too. So, what are the three leadership tables? Enthusiasm, confidence, and integrity. Yay! A plus! Awesome! So, who remembers what two things combine to create enthusiasm? Nobody? Nobody? Yeah. Yeah. It's in your notes, I promise. Energy and confidence. Oh, right. right it's by example. Enthusiasm. <laughs> it's, it's by inspiration. Excitement, energy. But urgency. Helen led with a sense of urgency. She built enthusiasm by showing excitement for her for her job and for learning and for having great energy in what she did. So who believes we all have the potential to be enthusiastic? Hands? Some of you aren't even enthusiastic, you can't enough to be if I can catch this thing up to where I am. Excitement and energy, there we are, sense of urgency. Okay, so what did we learn about enthusiasm? Do, do we have to be? It's contagious. Or do we have to feel? Yeah, we have to be. be. We have to be. We have to be. Nobody's asking how we feel, are they? I mean, maybe our best friends or our spouses or, or, or my, my mommy would ask me how I feel. Everybody else just wants to know how I'm going to behave. <laughs> if we didn't have enthusiasm, why would you be here? Exactly, exactly. But you'd be amazed. Have you ever gone into a business and, huh? <laughs> you ever gone into a business and you felt like you were keeping them from something? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. <clears throat> um, I actually had that happen this weekend. I like to shop. I'm in the pro leagues for two things. One is wine drinking, the other is shopping. Hey! <laughs> um, if that ever becomes possible, 
You're a hero. Um, I'm absolutely signing up to lead a team. That could be dangerous, though. Do you need to offer? I feel like that might not go hand in hand with it. Do you what? There's an app for that, drunk shopping. Drunk shopping? <laughs> oh, I thought we just called that Amazon. <laughs> Back to the subject. Okay, back to the subject. Back to the topic at hand. Um, but you know, you feel like sometimes you go to a shop, you feel like maybe they don't they don't want you taking up their time. Or if you touch their merchandise, you might mess up the display. But who's paying the bills? They are. The customer. That's right, the customer. And you don't want to hire people who have that attitude. And you don't want the people who work for you to grow that attitude. Enthusiasm is contagious. People catch it from their leaders. So you might want to write down or underline in your notes excitement, energy, and urgency. You don't have to feel enthusiastic. You have to be enthusiastic. Let's talk about confidence. I'm trying to get some of this extra stuff here. What? Actually, let's go back to enthusiasm. I know I skipped. <laughs> I skipped too much. Um, show of hands. I want to see ways that we can demonstrate enthusiasm. Yes. Uh, greet when people come in. Greet them. Greet people as they come in the they door. Well. Perfect. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Smile. Smile. Mm -hmm. Awesome. A smile will go a million miles, won't it? <coughs> Anything else? Inform customers by the products or sales. That's right. Be informed and make sure your customers are informed. Anyone else? Ways to be enthusiastic? Yes, ma'am. Don't hover around your customers. Don't hover. Let let them make their decisions. Yeah. Let them know you're on their team. Okay. Explain what you mean by that. You're there to help them with whatever they need. Yes. I like that. I like that. You're at their service. Yes. Like your stuff as much as you want them to like your stuff. That's right. Don't, don't, don't sell things or do things you're not proud of, huh? It'd be hard to be enthusiastic <coughs> about something you don't like. Anyone else? One more. Tell your employees they're doing great. That's right. That's right. What's the thing about flies and vinegar and honey? Get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar? That's right. You're more likely to get your way if you're nice to people. People respond quickly to praise. All right. These are all important. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the things that Andrew has written up here, the things that you all have just shared with each other. Flip back to that light green sheet. And on the enthusiasm portion, Make yourself whatever note you need to make. So that you can always work toward being an even better you. Ideas to develop your proficiencies in the enthusiasm pickle. And hey, if you come up with something novel that we haven't already said yet, shout it out. Give me just a second to do that. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry, you were supposed to be more enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get you a tissue? <laughs> I was just going to chew a second. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. So Andrea and I have to sit down and come up with a plan for this class because normally we teach it in a half day. And normally in that half day we have foot races and trivia quizzes and lots of things that take three and a half hours. So, I hate that you all aren't getting to get up and race around with me while I face the floor up here. Let's do it. However, <laughs> the last if you time want to get home before 10.30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and last, last time, time we did it, I was caught in the crossfire <laughs> of a race to get the trivia question posted on 
their respective walls and like got spun around and like almost knocked over. So she looked lovely in her heels, but that's the last time she <laughs> I was like this. Yeah. 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 That will never happen again. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to confidence. The confidence pickle. I want to hear from you. Why? Think of a leader you have confidence in. Any leader, I don't even know who it is, could be anybody. Why do you feel that way about them? What about a leader inspires confidence in you? Fire. Well, oh wait, give her a chance to change partners. Now fire. What, what we think Action. is a honesty. Honesty. Even when you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Smart. Smart. Honest. Smart. Reliable. Reliable. They're the best at what they do. The best at what they do. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. You go, girl. She's awesome, isn't she? She keeps right. up with, yeah. with, with, with all the classes I've ever taught. She keeps right up with them. Well, it's really sloppy. <laughs> Trustworthy. Trustworthy. All right, back table. Are y'all still back there? Yes, Lisa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. A role model. A role model. Something that in my last company that we talked about with. Um, never mind. I'm looking at the wrong one. <laughs> no, we're talking about confidence. <laughs> <laughs> what the leader does that, that makes you feel confident. I was thinking integrity. Okay. <laughs> never mind. Save it. You're just ahead of the game. Save, Keep save, save right the it somewhere <laughs> for the next pickle. Anyone else? All right. So, Bob Farrell talked about the things a leader does to take fear out of the future. What are they? What are some of the things that Bob Farrell talked about that leaders do to take fear out of the, the future for the people who work for them? Communicate. Ask questions and share. Yes, share. Very good. And what else? Believe in them. You have to believe in people. You have to think the best. Our boss is amazing because no matter how thick the, the arrows come flying, no matter how bad things get, she always stands up for us. And if you ask her why, she'll tell you, I hired you. I have great confidence that you can do your job. So, that makes us feel absolutely certain that when we go out and we do what we feel like is the very best we can do, it will always be rewarded. She hired us knowing we would be good at what we do. Um, Isn't that what leadership is all about? That's what leadership's all about. That's what it is. It makes us feel good in knowing that we're, uh, we're somebody that someone can believe in. And My that's boss what used to teach the leadership training, so she's pretty good. Yeah, she's probably got she's probably got a foot in. Yeah. Since we haven't spoken about Chandler, let's say something. We go ahead. You go right ahead. So John Wooden, um, I used to coach, and um, a coach is, of course, a leader, I think. Yes. So one of his key things was he didn't do much coaching in the game because he prepared him for the game. So practice, of course, is more important than the game. Right. But long story short, in all of his books, he always said that being a good coach was getting more out of the individual than they thought that they could give. And so it's, it's just like that. You know, I think that's a go. perfect way to say that. Thank you. Yeah. You get points back there on the back row. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like back in it. That's right. That's right. Back in the game. So here's a good question for you. How many of you think that day-to-day -day employees know more about the day-to-day -day doings and goings on of their job than the person at the top. They should. Absolutely. Unless mm -hmm. the person at the top has been where they're at, then they don't have a clue. Then. But if it was six months since you were there, might things have changed. Mm -hmm. so, it's always changing. That's right. It's always worth listening to the people who you believed in enough to put them in a place. You have to be confident in the people you have put in that position in order for them to feel confident in your leadership. You don't hire people to tell them what to do. You hire people to know what they're doing. That's right. That's right. 
So who believes their employees are more in tune with their customers on a day-to-day -day basis than the boss is? They have to. Yeah, yeah. And who believes their employees understands the customer's wants and needs better than the people sitting upstairs? Absolutely. So when Bob Farrell says that um, your employees know more than you do, it's not necessarily literal. You know, maybe they, maybe you have an advanced degree and they don't. Maybe uh, you did that job for 10 years and they've been doing it for six months, but they're the man on the ground. They're on the scene in the day to day. And they have a special insight that needs to be attended to. <coughs> So, here's what I want y'all to do. Five minutes, I want you to come up with the benefits of sharing. Actually, let's do two minutes so we can get through this. <laughs> you look nervous on time. That's well, I, when you said five minutes, I was like, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not running around the room, so you get two minutes. The benefits of sharing information with your employees and the benefit of asking an employee for advice and opinions. So work with your teams and come up with a few things. Hi. Hi. Hi.
when you I ask employees for their opinions, they feel valued. As they, they do. Empowered. They do. Um, you might actually learn something. They might introduce a new thought. And she gave a good example. When she opened her business, she said she would never serve meatloaf, and now it's her number one. <laughs> <laughs> the meatloaf's good, i got to tell you. <laughs> and also, and I remember I said, one thing we're not serving is meatloaf, and that's the number one seller. I lost it. And the last, last reason why we want to keep talking with our employees, because they are on the front lines with our customers, and they may know some things like about meatloaf that we didn't want to know and we were close minded about. Exactly. Perfect. Yes. Guys? That sales closed. <laughs> you were close minded. Well, one of the things I've got in my business plan is that if you want to spot, inspire them to do as much greatness as you're trying to do, whether it be in your business or in the business that they might bring You want to create do. leaders. Right. Perfect. Yeah, because the best people you could possibly have working for you are more leaders, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Very nice. Uh, the ability to survive on the floor. Yeah. There you go. Right? Yes. Let employees thrive on what they're good at, not what you want them to do, but what they're good at. That takes True. a special touch. It really does. Excellent. You guys have some really great ideas. I'm impressed. Um, when, uh, <laughs> well, I just don't have time. I do want to do this, and I don't want to do this. She doesn't want this. So, <laughs> next like question. Again, we're going to take we're going to take about one minute this time. In your groups, be on it. What opportunities do you have? to ask the people who follow you for their opinions and advice. This is not why, this is when or how. How can you make that logistically happen? Because leadership doesn't just happen, it comes from a plan. So what are some opportunities you might avail yourself of to get these bits of knowledge that these people have to share? And it's okay to be creative. That's why we didn't have it. opportunities here. Some of us are competing against each other. Most of us can help each other out. So why not? Okay. That makes sense. And then 
Oh, I, I said that you could take a survey or have a suggestion oh, box. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll watch. the meetings. And then meetings. Yeah. That's kind of classic how-to, right? Staff meetings. What do you get? Oh, um, we're going to basically, <laughs> you set that up at the, at, at the tone at the beginning during the hiring process. You explain to them that anytime you have ideas or suggestions to increase productivity, uh, new flow processes to help streamline things, I encourage you to come to me to open door policy at any time. Cool. So you, you maybe um, make sure that your, your employees or the people who follow you don't see a visit from the boss as being purely uh, again, a, you're, uh, you're a negative. It from right? the outset during the hiring process. That's yeah. Cool. I like that. Oh, what we said was planned meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, idea box. One thing in human resources that we believe very strongly in and know what it likes is the performance and development review process. When you hire a new employee on a 30, 60, 90 day basis, you actually have a planned meeting where you can review your expectations and their, their feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important uh, when you're developing a new employee. Okay. Everyone hates it. But right. It's yeah. my job to make sure it happens. <laughs> hey, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Well, they took all the good answers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have, we still have, okay, we had the one-on-one -on -one meeting, the staff meetings, the suggestion box. When problems arise, don't wait to address something until the next meeting, especially if it's a monthly meeting, right. and then in the hallway. It doesn't have to be a formal meeting. You can have casual conversations. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably an important thing. If every interaction you have with the people who work for you is formal and, all right, is, is, is everybody ready to take the minutes for the meeting, it's probably going to become a little stilted and, and people are going to come to say exactly what they're expected to say instead of what they're really thinking. And so, yeah, that casual contact is, is good. Back table. <laughs> Everything that they just said. Everything they just said. All right. The one here, one, here. <laughs> the one-on-one -on -one meeting we thought was, or I thought was pretty important. And the suggestion box, I'm sure that it's maybe in there, but that, um, a, a job that, uh, a convenience store that we used to own, um, that really does not work, in my opinion. Um, because anybody can write anything. Right, okay. right. There's no accountability. It, it wasn't beneficial at all. Right? You get catch up in them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I started to say, we, we jokingly had, um, I worked in theater for many decades. We had a pyrotechnic box, um, and on the outside was a label that said suggestions. You burn. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Like, but... When we had a suggestion box, we were like, yeah, we found ketchup and stuff in it, you know? Um, you, don't, you only get negative suggestions. I'm like, not 100% for the most part, because if it's a positive one, they want to give it to you. If it's negative, I put it in the box. Right. right. And if you don't please all the people all the time, you know, if you don't right. answer to everyone, I'm like, okay. And it it goes that, personal. Like, yeah. You know, Joe said something yeah. smart to me. It can be pretty snotty on some level. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, the thing is, um, we want to have a forum for the people who follow us to um, to feel confident when they do need to complain about something. But at the same time, there has to be a level of professionalism and, um, and ownership of problems. We can't just uh, say snarky things and throw it in, a, in yeah. an anonymous box. So, yes, we forgot to mention topics. We topics. Can try topics now. Does anybody know what topics is? I don't. Tell it's you about a joke. It's, it's a, a joke. Yeah, we're the <laughs> it's a joke. We don't want to surprise people. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know about this nasty <laughs> website. <laughs> One day, <laughs> <laughs> Terry Ann. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Terry Ann. I thought she said topics. <laughs> 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 oh, An employee vacation. And then Mark is going to protective gear. interactions that big companies have. Um, what if small companies do that? You know, can, can you go to a picnic with the four people you work with and, or the two people you work with and, and talk shop light? You know? Why can't we all succeed? I don't know. 
I think everyone here is pretty successful. I have to tell y'all, if I look around this room, I'm like, I know all these people. <laughs> That's when I feel successful. I get, I get to, like, drop names and stuff. <laughs> well, I managed the uh, North Shore UTK games. Mm -hmm. uh, once a month, I head right up to the house and with the game mm -hmm. owners, which are video games. Right. If it's whatever your thing is, you do it. You do a horseback riding, you do all the going to, maybe barbecue, whatever. You do what you do good, you hang out, you watch the TV, talk about sports, whatever, and you get to know them on a social level. That way they feel better contacting and helping up to you. And once a month, I'll leave your business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to actually know people. Yes. Here, you do what? That's a double edged sword, too. Yeah. It, it, it can know, be. You get them to that point where they're comfortable, then, you know what I mean? It can be. You've got to keep a certain level of. Some people are truly not comfortable with a, with a really personal interaction. Um, I've been up on uh, uh, like mandatory fun days in my career. Uh, yeah, and there's there's the, um, the thing where you have to go play the games uh, to build teams. Cool. Oh, oh, those are horrible. Those are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so draw back for me. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I But, I mean, <laughs> you're right. If there's something that you genuinely all enjoy, if it doesn't have to be mandatory fun, yeah. um, I, I'm lucky I work in, a, uh, in an office where we choose to, to do social stuff together sometimes. Um, and I, I feel like that's an ideal situation. Because it is a lot easier to talk to your boss on a sofa than across the desk. Oh, yeah. So. You don't know what to say to your boy until you hand on a microphone and have him sing. There's, <laughs> there, there, there is magic in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, what can you do to show people you believe in them? Take their advice. That's right. Don't argue with them in front of customers. Yeah, so nobody likes to feel belittled or humiliated. Pay them a living wage. Yes, yes, we all want to be paid on Friday. <laughs> Treat them as if they matter. That's right. And sometimes we get paid in things that aren't money, like things like self esteem. It's important. Praise in public and reprimand in private. Yep. Yes. Oh, very good. Yes. I think that that's important in every imaginable aspect of leadership. Parenting, sports, um, work, whatever. Marriage. Marriage. Yes, I absolutely agree. Unless you're Walmart. Unless you're what? At Walmart. At Walmart. Um, <laughs> if you're at Walmart doing that, you're just there for my entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Golden <laughs> rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. That's right. You, That's said, right. It, you said it earlier about your own boss she's got your back, and I think that's a big thing. Yeah. You, need to, yeah. you need to make sure that they know that you've got their back. Yes. Yeah, Much people like are busy captain. surviving on growing. Much like an army captain, you're there out on the field with them, fighting the same fight they are. You're all on the same team. You all have the same goal. So let's all fight towards that same goal. Right, right. Yeah. One thing that has really worked for me is instilling some type of ownership for them. Mm -hmm. So like an incentive program. I like it. I, um, the, I, I tell this story constantly. People get sick of hearing about it. But I always try to say, um, if I'm going somewhere where I know that I'm going to be in like um, corporate digs and I'm not going to be able to stay in like some cute little B&B, which is my total preference, um, for the same reason, if I can't do that, then I stay in a Hilton. Any Hilton. Here's why. Hilton has a philosophy that basically if you tell someone that you're having a problem, I don't care. Do what? I said they own it. I mean, yes. I said, Oops, sorry. <laughs> yes, that's it. They own it. They own it. I told the, um, I told the lady who had come to uh, fix my door key that I couldn't find a, a corkscrew. Because again, I drink wine and pro legs. <laughs> and um, she found me a corkscrew in the middle of the night so that the girl I was traveling with and I could have a bottle of wine. Um, it's important when you're traveling. That's important when you're traveling. Yep. Time change, ugh. <laughs> um, Gotta keep the guys from happy. That's right, that's right. 
If you tell the guy mowing the yard that you need a wake-up call, it is his job not to leave that premises until your wake-up call is set up. They take ownership of, of everything that you need. And so I always try to stay there because I really like being treated like that. If somebody were staying at my house and they told me that, you know, um, my daughter's cat had, you know, eaten her shoe, I would really want to take care of that myself. I wouldn't go, well, I ate my cat or shoe. <laughs> but that's how I feel sometimes when I stay other places. And I like to stay somewhere that treats me well, so I, I do that. So, encourage people, believe in people, support people. You can really do a lot to change where their lives are going. You can create leaders too, like you said. Creating leaders is always the best. So does anyone have an example of something they're currently doing to inspire confidence that has not been discussed? Hire people you believe in. Yes, absolutely. Here's what I want you all to do while you're pondering on that. Back to the light green sheet. I want you to write yourself down some confidence goals. Inspire confidence. I know it's not written very big, is it? And it's on green because that helps. <laughs> I'll give y'all just a minute to do that and then we'll go on. So, quick question. What are the three leadership pickles? Enthusiasm, confidence, integrity. Okay, this table over here is on it, y'all. This one, too. I heard it over here, too. Jesus. Jesus. I wrote it down my hand. Oh, oh. Enthusiasm. Give me a D. Nothing else you noticed ago. <laughs> you go ahead. 
Now, the company I used to work for, the, the, um, our leadership values, <coughs> one thing I learned about integrity, and it really resonated with me, it's all of those things, but it's consistency. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're, if you're sporadic, you, if, if, if you're not consistent, you, you ruined it all. Yeah. So consistency was almost the underlying principle that aligned with integrity. I think All it takes right. is one person that shows that you're not, and your reputation is gone. Right. So if you believe it and you do it, do it consistently. You know, treat every employee consistently. Yep. I think the thing about integrity is that it's hard to fake. Yeah. Because yeah. sooner or later, the devil's going to come out. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to get caught at, at it. You know, integrity is doing the right thing. Who, who said it? That was the greatest thing. Do, doing the right thing, whether anybody's looking or not. Is that you? Part of the Navy Corps value. That's that's it's something that's a good description. By. That's their definition. Yes. I was in the Navy. Um, I wanted to join the Navy, but by the time my children were grown, I was too. <laughs> I was a little older than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, who believes that only people of sterling character and high moral and ethical code can demonstrate authority? Anybody can demonstrate authority, right? Can you start right now? If you five minutes ago were not demonstrating integrity, could you decide to do so right now? Yes. That's the awesome thing about right now. Our kids do it all the time. Every time when mine gets caught, they become the most integrity bound, morally righteous person. I know. And but then eventually I turn around again. So a lot of people fail to do it, but they're eventually shown up. That's right. That's right. So what she was talking about with consistency. Do you believe that anyone at all can demonstrate integrity? They can try ability. Not willingness. Okay. But it's within all of us. Whether we choose to seek it or not. I think so too. Um, who believes that someone who has been of questionable character can one day choose to demonstrate integrity going forward? Who's ever watched a presidential debate? Do what? Who's ever watched a presidential debate? Come on. People make mistakes and they overcome it. That's true. That's true. That's absolutely true. So you guys have all, by one method or another, been chosen to lead. Um, chances are you have integrity, or you probably wouldn't have found yourself in the position you are today. Um, do you demonstrate integrity every minute of every day in every situation? No. Nobody does. The good news is we need to make new choices every day. So when you find yourself, you know, going, hmm, anytime you find yourself questioning yourself, it's, a, it's an opportunity to make yourself wiser and better going forward. It's important to see those as opportunities. You know, um, I heard someone say one time, and I thought this was, this was brilliant, if you have to question your conscience, then you're probably doing something wrong. Um, but it gives you the opportunity to inspect what you think and what you're doing. So, who thinks it's easy to demonstrate integrity all the time? Hands? <laughs> Super easy, we all just do this. <laughs> For Marla, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen her give children too much cake. I've seen her do it. <laughs> I wrote on here, come on, Marla, remember this. <laughs> That's exactly what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's difficult to demonstrate integrity all the time. I think so. I think so. I think if not, then you're probably not looking very deeply into anything you do. Um, and you don't find yourself questioning things. So, let's talk about. What you see, what they see is what you'll get. Somebody interpret this for me. If they see you taking shortcuts to get something done, then that's how they're going to do it. 
and what was done right. Absolutely. You always have to make sure you're following exactly what you're teaching them, and they'll see you do it, and then that's exactly how they do it. Very nice. Very nice. If they yes. see the best, they'll get the best. Yes. Yes. All perfect. Um, do, does anyone here does anyone here have a story about someone who did not? Yeah, most of the people I've worked for. <laughs> Demonstrate integrity, somebody who acted in a, in a hypocritical way. Without giving anything with away, does somebody want to tell their story? I'll tell my story. Okay, go ahead. And this is not Natasha. <laughs> she never so, talks to us. So we're going to her. <laughs> this is not Natasha. Oh, I thought I knew who this is. This is where I worked before. Yeah, okay. Um, I worked for a credit union for a few years, and I'm annoyingly on time. I'm a morning person. She's chipper, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> I know. But I was always on time, and our boss, the branch manager at this branch, she preached all the time, be on time, don't be late. People would get in trouble for being two minutes clocked in, like two minutes after 8 o'clock clocked in. But she would roll up in there, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and that, that was hypocrisy. She didn't practice what she preached. And those people, most of her staff was late all the time because she didn't demonstrate that integrity of being on time. Now, I was on time just because, like, I can't live with myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. She woke me up plenty of times telling me, I'm afraid I might be a minute late. It was this morning, too. Nobody said. cares. I might be an hour and a half late because I'm going to be there until 10 o'clock. I texted him. I texted you before I even left my house. And I she knew. Great. Yeah, I knew I was going to be like three minutes late, maybe, maybe five minutes late. And I was like, Natasha, I'm just really running behind this morning. And then like 30 minutes later, Natasha was like, it's fine. We're going to have a lot of overtime. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> Thanks. I tend to roll my overtime off in the mornings because mornings. <laughs> and I'm the afternoon, so that's why it works out because I come in early. I used to um, I used to help coach a cross-country team before um, kindergarten through sixth grade. I love kids. I don't ever want to be an elementary school classroom teacher because it's very abnormal to put 30 little people in a room and tell them to sit down for eight hours. They call um, down to Earth Academy. <laughs> <laughs> so I found a way around that by, by coaching cross country. Because what in the world could be better than a, a sport that requires zero equipment, um, doesn't doesn't really cost anything or whatever, and these the kids down um, where, where I was working with them were not, by and large, well off, um, and some of them only had flip flops to run. So I was I was a cross country coach, and at some point, um, it became apparent that we were the only team that all the coaches ran with the kids. And somebody asked us why one day, and um, my oldest son at that point was my rabbit because running with the kids for me meant running behind the kids. Um, all the heart in the world, but not necessarily the, uh, the lungs of a greyhound. Um, so my oldest son, who uh, ran cross country for Tennessee High, would, would run up front with the fast ones. So why do you all run with them? You, you don't have to do that to coach. You can just stand there with an air horn. And he said, but if we don't run with them, how do they know what to do? The leader runs in front. Sometimes the leader runs dead behind. It's okay. The leader has to run. The leader has to run. So I think that's important. It's important not to be hypocritical in front of the people who follow you um, because they will notice. They will take note of it. They will internalize it, and no good will come of it for you. So, have you ever seen a store that has signs posted about customer service? But they don't really do that? <laughs> when it says customer service, the little thing that has that inner gate. Yeah, yeah. That's not right. See, if I had a store, I'd have to be honest. Excuse me, I'd have to have one of those signs that said unaccompanied children will be given a puppy and a cappuccino. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you. 
Children in a small room are not my thing. I like them outside. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's hypocritical. The manager will be standing up against the wall complaining because so-and-so is not working hard enough and there's a long line. I see this in restaurants, particularly. Well, manager in there. You ever see the manager standing there yes. in, his, uh, in his nice collared shirt complaining about how the bar staff's behind, yeah. but he ain't slinging a drink? Or he's in the kitchen cussing out his employees. Right, but he's not, he's not contributing. He's not doing anything to change it. Don't you think it's in doctor's offices, our medical offices, that it's hard because the doctors, the medical staff never usually has worked the front desk. And I, and I wonder, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who are unhappy and they work for doctors. And I'm, I've always wondered why. And I thought, you know, you just, what you just said made sense. They probably, the doctors have never agreed a separation there. Yeah, there's just too much of a difference. There's a huge separation of jobs there. Mm -hmm. And they have no idea what everybody else has to right. do. I don't necessarily want the, sur the, the sur uh, receptionist to do surgery, but yeah. I think it would be nice if the doctor occasionally <laughs> answered the phone. Yeah. So. Yeah, when well, you, well, you finish my uh, appointment, could you take a look at my ear? <laughs> <laughs> I've got this weird plane. Yeah. 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 Ye
Wait now, for the business plans, you're only going to require one, not well, three. If you, can bring, if you can bring three, that would be great. Are there going to be three judges? Or yeah, we there's three the judges, so I. Have so you all well, well, will the three pass to the other three? No, they won't. They're separate. So go ahead and bring three. Thank you, Sandy. Three will be great. And since Sandy has been a pitch judge multiple times, I'm going to let her, if she has anything, one of the things somebody did ask, how long is your business plan needs to be a certain amount of pages? And she had a really good answer for that. And she should be able to provide some information about your pitch. Um, I guess from my standpoint, when I've judged other uh, challenges, um, from a business plan perspective, I don't think anyone is wanting to spend hours and hours going through 100, 200 pages. Because um, the, the longer you make it, 
the more opportunity that they're going to, their minds going to wander. So make it concise and, and you know, tell the story what you're wanting to do, how you're going to make it succeed, what you're going to do with the money. I mean, just what a business plan. And that's really what you need to look at for your pitch as well. Um, when I've done those, one of the things I hate is during that time when you had that opportunity to go before those judges that when you leave, I still don't know what it is you're wanting to do. Make sure that you're playing on what your plans are for your business, where it's located, what you plan to do with the money, <coughs> etc. You've got, based on what we've done before, you've got a tremendous, you've got almost double the amount of time that we've normally done for pitches. So you've got a great opportunity to tell your story, take advantage of it. And as she said, we've got a great group, just a few that I know of, uh, once uh, written several entrepreneur books, so I'm excited about having her here. Um, so well, there's a, a great opportunity, and um, take advantage of it. Oh, do you have a couple of No, I was just going to say, don't sing a song. And plus, based on from past uh, <coughs> challenges, you've actually got input now already from the mm -hmm. last few weeks. I mean, that everyone so should be giving it 100% next week. So I wish you luck, and um, that's it. Well, and the pitches will be held at the Higher Education Center. Does everyone know where that is? You yes. pass it every time you come here. And it's in room 240 in the Executive Auditorium. I wish you, which are both upstairs. And don't come. By 240, you mean second story? Don't come one minute before it starts and you have a AV equipment and so forth to set up. That's a, to me a no-no. Come early, get prepared. Plus, if you come late, you're going to be nervous. Trust me, we've all been there and that's going to throw off your game. Be there and take your time. Um, I would like to have your PowerPoint by 4 o'clock that afternoon. So I can have every, if that is good enough time for everybody, that way I can have it loaded on the computer and we can be ready to go. We're going to set up like this, just like over there. Will we have an easel available if we wanted to do a flip chart? We can bring one. Mm -hmm. Just in general, if we have props and whatnot, how do we go about doing that beforehand, coming there in advance before our stuff? How do we do that? Well, you can't have it in the way of your, the folks that are in front of you or of behind you. Um, I, I would believe I would have um, a canoe. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such a With the water. Or a four-wheeler or Bring a Well, I'm just saying for all of us, you know, whatever our business goals, whatever our jobs are, you know, I'm sure we have to be there in advance. How do we do a job? You can have it on the side room if your hands on, you know, especially with the lot. I'm just trying to look. Take some separate and just kind of wander around. Let your business is always. Thank you so much.